Hi guys, welcome. And in today's session, we are going to talk about what is a domain oriented microservices architecture. And following are the main areas that we are going to cover in this session. So first of all, we'll see what is a microservices and where we can use microservices and some disadvantages of using existing microservices architectures. And then we'll be moving into uh, the DOMA or the domain oriented microservices. I'll give you a brief introduction and I'll show you how we can use this concept. As you may know, the term microservices became kind of like a buzzword among software architects and software practitioners who are doing software design and all in recent years. So everybody wants to implement some kind of a microservices architecture within their software. So the question is, is it like suitable for everyone? So the answer is no, it's not suitable for everyone. So in order to implement microservices, you should have to have at least few of these features that I have mentioned in here. Is your product is SaaS based or the number of users are increasing day by day? Do you need a lot of elasticity? You, do you need to scale your system? Right. And do you need to implement uh, CICD pipelines, continuous integration, continuous deployment? Or do you need to have daily builds that are going on to the production? You know, quick production deployments. You know, there are a lot of things that you have to have in order to implement uh, a microservices architecture. So if you want to learn about microservices architecture, there are a lot of resources. So you can go into these places and uh, learn about this wonderful architecture. So let's examine why I told that microservices is not for everyone. So microservices architecture inherently is a distributed software architecture. So most of the distributed software architectures are complex. So that is the main caveat behind the microservices architecture. In order to have a successful microservices architecture in the in production environment, you have to have these features enabled. The observability, service discovery, fault tolerance, circuit breakers, chaos engineering and technically capable teams and there are many more enablers that who would uh, or which would help you to have a successful microservices architecture in a production environment. So this one is not easy. I mean like if you are a startup or if you are doing a very simple project, it is not suitable to have all these things implement in your architecture or in your software. First of all, you have to make sure that you are building uh, a minimal viable product or MVP to uh, satisfy your business functionalities. So it's not for everyone. Let's examine some of the examples of implementations of this microservice architecture. So I have taken the Netflix architecture and the Twitter architecture. Both of uh, these companies are using microservices at their base. So you can see how complex it is. So this is a simple, uh, actually this is supposed to be a simple architecture diagram that anybody can understand by looking at these pictures. But you can see how complex things became in both these companies. So this is the problem that we are trying to addressing using DOMA or the domain oriented microservices. So as an example, assume that you must implement microservices architecture because of the requirements that you have, but still you need to deal with the complexity. So what we are mainly focusing uh, using DOMA or the domain oriented microservices architecture is have uh, organized or manageable clusters. So what we are doing is we group together several microservices into one cluster and consider it as a one domain or one group. So these uh, groups can be clustered or grouped together or set of microservices can be grouped together by their functionality or any other business need. And a uh, group of services would be more comprehensible. So as you know, if you are going with distributed architectures, most of the architecture patterns that we are using today are not comprehensible. So that means that you know you, you cannot keep everything in one person's mind. So that's why uh, the technology such as uh, chaos engineering and automated testing and all these things came up. Another reason could be 
assume that you are still a medium sized company but you want to implement microservices architecture because of various reasons because of various business reasons so uh, then what you can do still i mean you are, you are a medium sized company and you have a small team but one uh, concept behind microservices is that one particular team owning one particular microservice from development testing to deployment and even to support afterwards so since that you have a small team you cannot afford it i mean there are not enough people where you can assign uh, per microservice so then what you can do is you can uh, use doma to leverage this situation so what you can do is you can uh, create some kind of a comprehensible cluster which has similar kind of functionality with many microservices and you can assign that cluster into or one cluster or one domain into one team and then uh, we can encapsulate uh, these domains or clusters using api gateways and orchestrators and i will explain to you that in a while now let's see where this concept of doma been emerged actually this is uh, been emerged or first used at uber so i this section i have uh, taken from the uber's website and this is how they have used uh, the doma principle so as you can see first of all they have had grouped domains i mean they grouped several uh, microservices into one domain and they have the layer design as well so what they did was they these group uh, these grouped microservices or domains been putting into some kind of more or less like a layer so that is you know a bit similar to the uh, layered architecture design that we used to have in our monolithic architectures a bit similar but not the same concept but a bit similar and uh, then this uh, the, the communication in between uh, these domains are maintained using gateways and still uh, they can use the extension architecture pattern as well uh, to communicate with other services or other domains so in the next slide we will see an example of how we can use this thing so this is a kind of like a typical microservices uh, architecture pattern that uh, i am uh, explaining here so we are using an api gateway here where all the external communications are encapsulated or all the external communications first come into api gateway so api gateway is implemented using a lot of routing rules security rules and all that so they are distributing each request into relevant microservice so this is you know kind of like a, a typical uh, microservices architecture pattern that we are talking about here so in here you can see that you know there are a lot of calls going on inside there are a lot of communication in between microservices a lot of stuff are going on so as an uh, you know in the typical microservices implementation each of these services should be belongs to one particular team so this particular as i told you earlier this team this particular team uh, who are taking care of microservices so one particular team will take care of the entire life cycle or the ecosystem of the microservice so as i told you if you are a small or medium sized company you do not have this much of team to manage each of your microservices so then we'll see what we can do with doma in domain oriented microservices what we first do is we are identifying microservices which has similar characteristics or similar functionality and then we group them together into a one single cluster or a one single domain then we can build an api gateway where other domains or other entities can interact with this uh, microservices cluster or a domain so that is the core concept behind the domain oriented microservices and the the most important thing is that all these microservices we can assign it to one particular team so since that uh, this all these microservices have similar functionality it would be easier for that team to manage this set of microservices rather than one single microservice and we can implement some kind of a, a gateways or sockets or anything that to communicate with other clusters as well so this is the basic concept behind the domain oriented microservices so as you can see most of 
these examples that I have using in here are REST-based microservices. So what we can do if you are using an event-driven microservice? If you are using event-driven microservices, this is what we can do. So instead of implementing an API gateway, you can implement an orchestrator. So this orchestrator, so all the other domains or other services would communicate with this orchestrator and the orchestrator has the responsibility to communicate with uh, that particular clusters or particular domains, other microservices. So normally, uh, you know that we can use patterns such as Saga pattern and all, use uh, a message broker such as Kafka to communicate uh, within the microservices if you are implementing event driven microservices. So this, uh, the orchestrator can, uh, as I told you earlier, can maintain a Saga state and based on the uh, state machine, we can, the orchestrator can communicate with other services as well. So this is just a brief introduction to uh, DOMA or the domain oriented microservices. So this is a fairly new concept, but I hope uh, this particular concept would help a lot of small and medium sized companies to go ahead with microservices architecture. Thanks.